Hey folks, Dr. Groovy here, Scott Grove from GroovyMusicLessons.com, here to help folks that um, have a little hard time uh, dealing with minor chords you know, within a song and playing some cool little things to go along with it. Today we're going over the tried and true parts of, like if you're in G major. We've all heard this a bunch of times, this. Okay, so when you're playing stuff like that, the scale goes all the way up. Okay, so up like that. Um, and you like to use those because they sound good. And if you go to C. Okay, um, this doesn't have to be a country thing, but I like the country thing, so that's the way I'm going to toss it out there. If you go to D. Okay, so those are all the major parts, but what if you're in G, and it goes to the two minor chord, so up to the A minor. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use that, okay, over the minor chords, like the two minor being the A minor, the six minor being your E minor, and so forth. Okay, because you've got your E. Okay, so those are going to sound good. Some people just don't know how to use those, so I'm going to teach that. Um, I'm also simply going to teach you how to do it on um, other strings instead of doing everything up on the high E and the G string. Okay, so you've got your C major that you normally just go way up here to the 8th and ninth fret. But maybe you don't want it to sound that high. You need something more. Okay, so I'll show you how to get it on a different set of strings so you can do the lower sounding things, which sound cooler on jazz or what have you. Okay, so that's what's coming up. Um, if you're interested in that, again, just going from one set of strings to another set of strings, plus showing you how to do the minor stuff. So when they show up, you still know what to do when you are on this idea of type of playing. Okay, so I'll catch you for the lesson. Okay, thanks for sticking around for the lesson. As always, I like to let everybody know what kind of guitar I'm using because... Some people dig them, some don't, but they want to know what it is. Anyway, this one's just a regular Mexican uh, strap. And I just pimped it out, is all. Put uh, roller saddles on it. Put a lot of gold everything on it. If you notice the knobs, they're actually from a Marshall amplifier, which look really cool. You can get those and pop them on. Any Fender guitar, they fit right on. Uh, you see the rhinestones that are everywhere. Even put gold punched out with a um, paper punch. Gold dots for the inlays. Um, just beautiful. <laughs> uh, this here is off of a Ibanez Paul Stanley model guitar. Uh, you can get those online. Very groovy stuff. Um... What else about it? Oh, yeah. Got the... Uh, can I get her in here? Yes, the young lady here riding the Stratocaster <laughs> in front of a Fender amp. Um, isn't that a beautiful thing? And what a nice pair of eyes she has. So, yeah, beautiful axe. Even got my gold star that I won back in kindergarten for drawing a picture of the lady on the back here. Okay, so... Going to what um, I was talking about, let's go real quick over what the regular scale is from doing the... Okay, that's in the key of G. What we're going to do is, okay, we're using our middle finger and our ring finger. We're starting on the high E string, which will do all of the, uh, we'll name all of the little chords we're going through. 
we're actually going to go G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, then G again. Okay, so third fret, and then on our G string, we're going to go fourth fret. Okay, um, some of the shapes will end up just like this, and all the other shapes will be two fingers on the same fret. Okay, so what we're doing is just the scale only uh, to begin with, to get you familiar with uh, the major scale for this type of playing so that everything else going along will make sense. Okay, so in the key of G, um, not only in the key of G, but only if you're playing in G um, and you have not switched chords to C yet or to D yet or anywhere yet. Only if you're in the key of G will this work on every possible uh, thing I'm showing you here. Okay, so we're doing those two strings, skipping the B string. It will never be used here. Okay, how do you shut the one up if you're using like a pick, which I don't. Okay, you can use the top of your ring finger there, and that's what I'm doing. And it's leaning against the B string, and I've also got my ring finger leaning against the B string and shutting it up. Okay, so I've got two fingers shutting up that B string. And plus I'm just only picking those two strings. Okay, so for the whole thing, we're going on the high E again. It's going to name all of the um, notes and chords here. So we do G. Now we go up to five and five fret numbers. We have to switch fingers. Okay, so we're using our index and middle finger if that's what you want to use. So five and five, that's a minor chord. But it's all part of still G major. And I'll make this make sense in a little bit. So major will always look like this, the staggered thing. Um, something that is minor that will be relative here in a little bit um, will show up with both uh, fingers on the same fret. So we have G up to A minor up to B minor on 7 and 7. Now we go up to C because that's C on the high E string. So you got to get familiar with your high E string. And it's C major so they're staggered again at um, 8 and 9. Up to D which is 10 and 11. Now we're actually going to minor and minor again. So you're going 12 and 12. 14, 14 which would actually be a diminished chord if we were actually playing the B string, but we're not. And finally, we're just up an octave where we started it at, so 15 and 16. That takes you back to the G like this. So everything there. Did I go back here? Because we did up here. Same thing. We did kind of the minor thing that would have been diminished, but so that same thing. Now we'll go ahead and go right to what the whole minor situation is. And that is the stuff that we played on the same fret. So if we are in G, you can do everything that I showed you. Most people typically uh, stick to the they might go up to that C major but get back down to um, this part of the main G thing. Okay, so that's the typical thing everybody reaches for um, being those three formations. And sometimes and then resting on either this G section or and some people will actually take the 6th fret approach also and then slide up into the 7th and 7th fret okay so when we go from G Like an A minor, which is that's a very 
very cool sounding thing. Uh, that's where most people get lost. And that is only this. It's, we went from G major to the A because it's our high E string and it's telling you what's going on. And again, like I said, if they are on different frets, that's major. But if they're on the same fret, that's minor. So the next two you had here, now you went to A minor. The same principle going on here, but we're just going to A minor. Nothing different is happening than what we normally did. We're still on 5 and 5 and then 7 to 7, but you want to stop back at 5 and 5 to stay in A minor. And you play it however you want, of course, uh, as far as um, the voicing, or not the voicing, <laughs> um, like here. However you want to do that there, however you want to speak this thing, um, you do it. Okay, so it's just a neat thing to go to. And being that a minor would be played, you know, like a bar chord, without that, a take off the middle finger, you got minor. You can actually use all three fingers, or all three, <laughs> all three fingers, yeah, use them all. Um, all three strings, if you want to, okay, because it's part of the minor chord. It's just like going with the minors or whatever sounds coolest to you okay so that gets that out of the way as far as what you do um, when a minor happens okay and the other minor that's going to happen is going to be the six minor that was just a two minor because you're in G you're going up to the two chord which almost always is going to be a minor as is the six um, and the three even um, one two three B minor you do the same thing you just go up to the B and play the minor shape where they're both on the same fret and if you're on E minor what do you do um, what where's the E string so you can do or now the open one is not as cool because it's just not okay so here's where we get to simply uh, switch gears and go to a different string a set of strings let's just go to the B string and the D string and play the same way so whatever is on the B string is the same as what we were doing before uh, whatever note that is, we're skipping the G string, and you just play it minor like that. Okay, so now you have a way to play, but make it sound cool. And another place here, or so you can uh, voice it how you want. Um, so that's the way you get that. Um, the whole thing about uh, skipping to the next set of strings is simply exactly the same thing you were doing before, but knowing the notes on your B string. Because if we were to do the G, you do the same thing here. Here's the G on the B string right there at the 8th fret, and you make the same uh, staggered looking thing. You do everything the same. There's no difference. But, like I had said at the intro of this thing, if you want to go up from that, to the C chord, maybe you don't want to go way up here. Because it sounds too much like a carnival ride or something. <laughs> it kind of does. You know, if you're... Especially if you go to D. 
you don't want to do that every time because it sounds like everything you've ever heard. Um, so we would just simply go to the C on the B string and do our jagged little pill here. And do the exact same motions we did on like the G thing. But now we're doing it on C. And it takes on the characteristics of the whole shapes as the G did because we are actually in C now. So it will do the same characteristics as the G. So major, minor, minor shapes. Because before we were actually going from C to D major. Okay, that's only during G major because that's the whole like right there. D major. That doesn't apply to C when you are actually playing a C chord. That only applied to when you are in G. Okay? When you're playing the G chord. Can you do exactly that whole scale thing that I showed you? But when you're in C, everything changes. It's major, minor, minor, major, minor, minor again. <laughs> major major minor minor of the second time okay so um, in C just letting you know that you have this option now instead of so that's all it is is everything is just switched to the B string and you have a different option and D would take on now you go to the D chord and you just simply Instead of being way up here in cartoon land, uh, sounds like Snoopy. Um, actually, kind of is <laughs> the little peanuts thing. Okay, so that's what's going on. Uh, so don't be afraid to play your minors. Okay, if we go from G major down to the six minor, E minor. cool okay again we're on the B and D string using the E because we're in E minor skipping the G string going right to the D string and both are on five because the B string that's where your E note is just like you're tuning okay so moving from there even sounds cool and it's the same thing if you're going to the 12th fret on the high E um, and G. It's just a matter of how you want to voice it and then how you want to phrase it. And again, if you're on the E and G string, you can add the B string. You can't do that on the other strings. Sorry. So if you're just going out... Okay, so you're playing in G major, E minor, okay, so you can add that B string in there, okay, um, if we were doing that E minor here, you could, um, you'd have to do this, you'd have to take um, and you want to play all three strings, you have to take the one in the middle on the G string that we're not playing and move it back one. So that's how you would play that if you want to voice it the same as the other one, but just play it down here. You just take the one finger back in the middle. So you got G. E minor. Okay. And if we were doing C way up here for a C minor, oh, sorry, C minor. We wouldn't do C minor, we do A minor. <laughs> to do 
A minor on the B string, it would be up here. Because the B string is naming the chord, so A is way up here. It's going to be exactly the same, though, as here. But again, to do this on all three strings, again, you would do the same thing. Instead of, and you wanted all three strings, you would not do, you have to take the one finger back. So you get G, A minor. Sounds pretty decent to actually bring it back just one fret. Okay. Okay. So even if you're doing that or the slow tunes, even, and the song happens to simply be in A minor, it's not in G, um, everything still applies. It's in these two things, or, or, again, that's always going to be a quickie if you're going a half step behind. Okay, so if your song is just in A minor, okay, that kind of gives you that reason why you can go back half a step, you know, that one fret back, because if you're in A minor, uh, you generally like to do the, and that's why, it gives it that sound. So that's where that legit sound comes from. So Okay. So it gives you something to do. It does not, of course, take all your other stuff away. Um, if you want to play an A minor. just uh, gives you something else to consider okay it could just be the one way to play an A minor and not have to do it like an A minor shape way up here but yes it will work going from A minor up to B minor it all is still totally valid but it gives you a different Voicing. Okay. And other ideas, just a quick thing. You could start on the B minor because you know you're coming back to resolve on the A minor. So you're in A minor. start on the either minor actually okay so that is basically it I hope that helps out some of you folks that are um, have been asking about what do I do with minors when it comes to your typical it's like I don't want everything to sound like that song <laughs> uh, and you don't um, and again don't make everything sound like that just because those all work. Um, if you're in G, you don't have to go. You can just start at that one. And maybe not do anything else. Play your other stuff. Sorry for my flub, but... just part of it. It's just 
an option. Okay, so you guys stay groovy, and um, of course, I already am, and we'll catch you on the next lesson, all right? Herpy Trails.